In this video, we're going to look at a whole bunch of audio tips that will help you take your audio editing skills in Camtasia 9 to the next level. Whether it's setting the right volume, using audio points to fine tune, getting rid of filler words, or clearing up plosives and mouth clicks, I've got you covered. And be sure to watch through right to the end as I also cover how to mix music in with a voice track. Oh, and one more thing, don't forget to wear headphones or earbuds so that you can hear the signal details even better while editing. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing, and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Tip number one, adjusting volume. As you can see, I have a track now that I've laid down and it's actually a screencast recording from within Camtasia. It occupies two tracks because there's the video component and the audio. The width of the track that we're looking at is, is quite narrow. So to work on audio editing, I like to expand the track to make it much more visible. So that's zoomed in quite a bit. And then I've also would like to add the height. So now we can see the track and the volume print more, more easily. We can see our 100% level volume level if I play it is that you can of course you know, from within the app it's there but it's not loud enough so I like to play with the increasing the volume now there are a few options I can use the gain control up top here and you see it's sitting at 100 we also see the volume bar here says 100 I can use the gain control slider and you can see that raises the volume and I'm just going to do undo or we can raise the volume through the volume bar Personally, I, I prefer to to use the volume bar because with the gain control, once you introduce that, you you start to mess with what is the true percentage volume of, of your track down there. Because as you can see, if I put this up to 140 and I click on here, it still says 100. So what's the relationship? In addition to the volume bar, we have the ability to introduce what are known as audio points. You can just double click on the bar and once you've put those points on, if you click in between, you can either lower the volume or raise. And sometimes you need to add extra points on the side to control the angle that you want to, you know, produce your dip or your increase. Oftentimes, I want to balance out the volume level for my recording. So what I like to do before I determine where my final volume is going to be, because as you can see, if I raise it up, eventually the peaks go off off the top here and that means you're raising the volume to a clipping or distorted level above zero db so we don't want that but as i can see if i approach the top the average height is you know much lower down here with a with a bunch of peaks so i i want to likely use the volume leveling and i would drag that onto the track and then work with adjusting my final level for volume th through there I often will deal with both the application of the volume leveling and the noise removal. As a general rule of thumb, I like to have my height of volume, you know, not quite at the top, just a little below, you know, leaving a tiny bit of headroom so that in case I need to do some fine tuning or adjusting later, I can. Another very practical use of the gain control is when you want to use it as a master volume control. For example, we could go to the track level here, do right mouse button, select all media on the track. And if we want to, we can, you know, deal with the overall volume in the entire, in the entire video by just controlling the gain here. Tip number two, editing breaths, plosives, and other filler words. The iOS, I want to actually either get rid of that breath so I can cut it out I can actually silence it or I can just reduce the volume of the breath. Each situation will be different depending on how long the breath is, how noisy it is, and, and how it sounds after you play with it. So first off, I like to use the audio points. You can use the selection handles here. And when you put the selection handles out, when we click on the volume line, all of a sudden all these points appear. So there's four audio points that appear, but they allow us to drag up and down nicely. I've lowered the volume here. The iOS. 
it would be a little too unnatural if we were to actually clear the breath altogether. So let me just sample that for you to see how that would sound. There'd be like a dead silence. Right mouse click and do silence audio. As you can see, it flattened it out for us. That's here. Good solution here. The iOS. So there's like a sudden silence and it's too long. So that doesn't work. Let's see how that looks. Option here, the iOS. So that sounds pretty good to me. This next option is about fine tuning the audio points and silencing the breath and leaving it in. So I'm just going to show you how we do that. So first off, one thing to note is if you've zoomed in enough, you can actually move the handlebars frame by frame. As you can see, the duration is changing one little frame at a time as I'm moving it. So as you can see now, the breath still sound is there, but and it sounds a little more natural, not as pronounced. Android solution here, the iOS. Now we're going to look at how to edit out a plosive. Plus you. So as you heard, there was a big breath and then the word plus. And when I said plus, there was a big pop with the P there. And that happens when there's uh, an excessive amount of wind or breath and when you say the letter P being blown onto the microphone. So I'm going to put in some audio points to help us edit, edit it. Or actually, I'll just use the selection because the peak is nicely confined here. Bring that peak way down. And let's see how that is, if we can bring it right down low. Plus, you see how much cleaner that is? And it's not as um, punchy. Similar to plosives, you might make other mouth noises like mouth clicks and pops. And I'm just going to show us one more example to edit out. Check this. I want to tune. As you can see, that's a pretty high pop noise. And you can see by the waveform, it's like a real spike. Tune. See there, we pretty well near silenced it. I don't like to totally cut things out again because it makes things a little unnatural. In this next piece to audio edit, I want to show you how I remove a few filler words and then smooth things over. Right here, I have a few markers telling you what's here in, in, in the timeline on this track. I have the words, you know, here and the word, um. So I want to remove the word, um, here and, you know, and then pull things together and smooth the transitions. So. Let's just first play it so you can hear what it sounds like, okay? So, you know, uh, in here, the um, stickers and... There, I used ripple delete to remove the word um. Likewise, to remove the words you know. So, in here, stickers and emoji. Okay, so it's it sounds a little rough on the edges for the transition. So now we're going to uh, smooth things over. Stitch together the media. So stitch the media together. Let's play the whole thing. So in here, stickers and emotion. Sounds great. Tip number three is all about how you edit the music that you add combined with your talking head video. So you're going to see here, I have a clip here with uh, influencer Nick Nimmin, the awesome Nick Nimmin, talking about camera shyness. And we have a music track that we use to lead in. Now you may decide to use music as background throughout your video, or you may have it as an intro in the beginning and as part of the exit. But music combining with your, your video can, can be a great addition. And what we're going to do is just see how I edited it. So under audio effects, we have fade in and fade out. What you're going to see here is in the track that I have, there's all these audio points, which is the result of, of a whole tuning effort. If I, I first started by putting the fade in, and I'm just dragging here, not leaving it because I'm, I'm trying to show you that we did all kinds of fine tuning. So I'm going to let that go. And this is the fine tuning result. 
Likewise, we had a fade out. And as you can see that that would have an effect as well. Now let's just play first to see what the clip sounds like. Yeah. That's the hardest part of doing all of this stuff is, is th there's actually two things that, that I've found awkward. So what's very cool about this clip is we originally designed it because we wanted to build some anticipation before we brought Nick on. So we sort of told people what the video is about and we had the music playing throughout nice and loud. And then we started to soften the music, as you can see here by the, uh, the, uh, audio edit points we started to soften the music and then transitioned into Nick talking by the time we were there the background music was down to just a level of 28 percent and when we gradually phased it out to and you know see here it is it's about 16 percent here and then it gradually phased to zero and he and then he's he's talking you never want the music to crowd out the the ability for one to hear the voice Wow, Camtasia 9 is loaded with the audio editing features you need to produce great results. All you need is a little know-how and patience. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe icon on this page so that you can get more videos like this in the future. And thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.